We've got two weeks left in Smash Ultimate's second PGR season. And although there's another weekend after this for events, this weekend is by far much more important and serves as the true end of the year because of the S-tiered event, Congo Saga. But why exactly is Congo Saga so important, and why should you be excited about it? Well, that's exactly what we here at Pro Guides are about to tell you. And if you're looking for some last-minute help on preparing for Congo Saga, check out our on-demand coaching on ProGuides.com. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content, all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new Pro Course with MKLeo himself, a new one with eSam, as well as others coming soon. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the biggest reasons why Congo Saga is a must-watch event for any Ultimate fan. So you probably hear the term S-tier being thrown around a lot in competitive Smash circles, but it's hard sometimes to contextualize what it means. A really complicated formula calculates event value, but in short, the tier of an event provides a shorthand for how important an ultimate event is based off of how many top players are competing, how much money is on the line, and how many people are entering the event in total. And S is the highest tier an event can be on this ranking. There have only been six events that have broken into the S tier this season. Evo, Smash Con, Big House, Shine, Main Stage, and now Congo Saga. So putting the event besides names like that should help you realize just how crazy this event is going to be. And Congo Saga not only is among these events, it sits with the third highest value of any tournament so far this year, only being passed by Evo and Smash Con. Registration is still open for the event too, so there's even potential for it to climb even higher by the time this video comes out. The next reason that Congo Saga is going to be sick comes hand in hand with the first one. There is an enormous depth of talent signed up already. We'll talk about the importance of having all of the players at the top there later, but I think having a depth of talent is more critical for having a great event. At events with, say, six top players, the only matches you'll really be excited for happen in top eight or on the last day of the event. But when you've got 30 to 50 top players at the event like we did at Big House, every day two set becomes a must-watch one, and even some day one sets have big upset potential. This means that you're going to have to have that second monitor or squad stream set up ready for this event, because there'll be at least two must-see matchups going on at the same time all weekend. Another reason to keep your eyes glued to the big event this weekend is that this will be the first really huge event since the release of Terry. There's been tons of discussion on exactly how good the character is and quality performances at locals littered all across the world, but it feels like we don't have a definitive answer yet on how good Terry is. So hopefully Congo Saga will let us know if Smash players should be as afraid of these special move inputs as FGC Twitter would lead you to believe. But it is important to keep in mind that Terry development in Ultimate is still in its infantile stage, and a lot of players probably don't want to risk their final big event on a DLC character. So we may not see nearly as much Terry as some would hope for, but you're going to have to be okay with what we do end up getting. Also hailing from the 6.0.0 patch, we'll probably be seeing a slight uptick and maybe even some upsets from the handful of characters that were buffed in that patch. You can check out our patch notes video from just a few weeks ago to see exactly what got changed. But for a refresher, the characters who got buffed were DK, Kirby, Jigglypuff, Robin, and King K. Rool. We haven't really seen any mains of these characters put up Hallmark performances so far in Ultimate, but we've seen top players dabble with some of these characters. The most notable example being Tweak, who has sprinkled DK and K. Rool into some of his sets throughout Ultimate. Don't get your expectations too high for these guys, though. At best, one of these characters may catch a player off guard and pull off an early pulls upset. But more likely, we'll be seeing them scaring top players for a game, and then those players either switching to a different character or adapt to the new matchup by still winning the set. So we haven't talked specifics yet on the top players registered for Congo Saga already, so let's give you a few names. MK Leo, Tweak, Samsora, Nairo, Light, Cosmos, Gluttony. If that short list of players that have the potential to meet up in bracket doesn't get you excited for this weekend, I don't know what will. And the list of players who could win this tournament event extends beyond those six. Players like Shutone and T could also sneak their way to a first place finish at Congo Saga with the right bracket. But discussion on how everyone's prospects for winning or going on a deep run at the event are going to have to be shelved until the seeding and projected bracket come out. Japan, easily one of Ultimate's strongest regions, is looking to be in full force here at the event. Shutone and his Olimar will be looking to keep up his strong performance stateside this season, even though there's a pretty good chance he won't end up being ranked anywhere near his 5th place spot he earned on the first PGR. 
Pac-Man's champion, T, will for sure be adding a few more wins to his incredible resume that already includes Mars, Samsora, Light, and Glutiny, to name a few. At Summit, players had much more time to prepare for Pac-Man, knowing their matches sometimes days in advance. But in double elimination bracket like this, T's got a huge element of surprise in his favor. Raito, the other Japanese player with a wacky mane, will also be looking to show up big at Kongo Saga. With a top 8 finish at EVO, people obviously know that he's good, but he's lacking the stateside wins besides the buzz to prove it, so hopefully he'll get them here and not have too many Japanese team kills on his way doing so. Beyond these three, Kameme and his Mega Man, Proto Banham and his Lucina, and Umeki and his Daisy are just a few of the many Japanese players you should be looking out for this weekend. We'll also be seeing a ton of players fighting their heart out to make that last last push to pick up some wins to be able to make the PGR. The ones who will be fighting especially hard are the players who didn't make the cut last time and are fighting to prove that their lack of inclusion on the first list was a huge mistake. Louis Money already has wins on Shutone, Rivers, and Wadi for the year after only being an honorable mention on the first PGR, so he's got a decent chance already to make it in by that alone. But the Fox and Mario main from NorCal would not be too upset with grabbing a few more in the Congo. Best Ness is one of the few people out there playing Ness, and he's gotten some decent success from doing so. Wins over Light, Raito, Dark Wizzy, Yeti, Prodigy, and Goblin all just this season. So he's good for the ranking, no question. But he's been so close to closing out some Game 5 sets and just falling short against New Days at Super Smash Fest or Senji's Pac-Man at Glitch 7. So hopefully we'll see him finally clean this up at Congo Saga. And then there's Elegant, who's had a weird year after not being too active early in Ultimate. He's going to be carried heavily by his low-tier City 7 performance, where he double-eliminated Samsora and beat Cosmos. But he's got wins over players like Esam and Goblin to supplement it as well. Luigi is a character that feels like is talked about more than he's actually seen in Bracket. Everyone knows about how good his grab is and the combos he can pull off, but we don't ever see in a Bracket. So hopefully Elegant can change this at Congo Saga. And beyond all of this, there's still so many storylines and thread to follow coming into this event that it's impossible to give them all the time they deserve. So let's just rapid fire throw a handful at you before we end off this video. Will MKLeo finish off this season only finishing at first or second at PGR events, or will Lightning finally strike twice at the same event in the form of two crazy upsets? Can Tweak shake off the controversy from DreamHack Atlanta that has appeared to put even more stress on his recent sharp decline in gameplay? How much Pichu will we see from Void and Neotono now that the character has seen a soft resurgence? Glutiny has essentially steamrolled through all of his competition in Europe over the last couple of months, only really dropping sets when switching off his main, so how will this translate stateside where he has generally performed well? And what Californian hometown heroes will rise to the occasion and defend their home turf? I feel like with each of those bullet points, I, I just got closer and closer to becoming the fish anchor man from SpongeBob. I'm getting carried away. That does it for this video. Let us know any players that are going to be in attendance at Congo Saga that you're excited to see duke it out, especially if we didn't get the chance to talk about them. Also, let us know who's your pick to win the event, especially if those projected brackets are out by the time you get to see this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive ultimate scene in the future. <laughs>